alone is God and besides thee there is none we give you all the glory Jehovah we adore you God who reigns forever from everlasting to everlasting your God you are uncomparable God you reign in the heavens and the earth and even beneath the earth you are the help of the universe and so we want to thank you and honor you this day because you're the God the help of every humankind blessed be your name we want to thank you Jehovah for this day that you have made that we may rejoice and be glad in it we thank you for your purpose we thank you for your word we thank you for living faith program may your name be exalted as you reach out to your people according to your will Holy Spirit I want to thank you because of communing with me for the glory of God in Jesus name we pray Amen 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 we are honored once again to be in the presence of the Lord this day the Lord has given us grace and so we give him all the glory say hallelujah glory to God he alone is worthy of all our praise and adoration hallelujah I know I'm talking to somebody this day we are living in days that are very evil we are living in dangerous times and we are living in a generation that feels like God is non-existent because they seem to be thinking they know too much we are living in the generation of the whatever what do you, what do you call that generation the Z is it whatever it is I want to say we are living in times when technology has taken over and technology has taught people to think that it is greater than God and I want to talk to somebody today because I want to tell you even technology is not the issues of God it is the works of men now listen to me I say technology is the works of men it is about the wisdom and the knowledge that God has given man that technology has come is somebody hearing me so who is greater God or technology because he's the one who gives people skills hallelujah and I want to talk to somebody today because I want to set a standard tell somebody we are setting a standard there is a standard God is a God of standards and he does not compromise his gospel cuts across all generations Aha. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. There is no nothing, generation, technology, or whatever it is that can change who Jesus is. And the saving grace is still there. And I announce again, the saving grace is still there. The masses of the Lord are still new every morning. Did somebody hear me? And his faithfulness is so big. From everlasting to everlasting. So say hallelujah. We have a God who changes not. He is the same God of the Old Testament. The God of the New Testament. The God of the Holy Spirit's church. He is the same God. And the standards that were set in the Old Testament. Are the same standards in the new testament and even today the same standard is working am i talking to somebody so we have no reason why we should say oh we are living in dangerous times oh i don't know we are not able to conquer oh whatever story people give for not living right i hate saying that in our day salvation things were different because the same savior is the same savior today there is no reason why the church should go into sin. Because we want to say it is not the old salvation. There is nothing like the old salvation. There is nothing like our mother's times. God is able. I say God is able. I say God is able. 
And so today I want to talk about setting a discipleship standard. Disciples have a standard even now and eternity. As Jesus tarries, the story is the same. Because grace has not been overtaken. There is so much grace that evil cannot overtake the grace. Huh? Somebody, did you hear me? I said there is so much grace that evil will not overtake the grace. And I want to declare that the church will move on despite what the devil is doing. That is why I have to talk about grace. Because I know God is unstoppable. I say God is unstoppable. His plan and purpose must come to pass. Hallelujah. I say God's plan and purpose. I say God's plan and purpose. It has to come to it. It has to come and pass. Hallelujah. God is the same. There are people who passed the standard in the Old Testament. People who are able to deny themselves. Be separated from their family members. Be separated from peer. You know, today people are talking about peer. Our youths are talking about peer pressure. Peer that is leading them to evil. And I want to talk to somebody and say, as Jesus they says, those who want to follow me must deny themselves. Take up the cross. And follow. That story even now is there. And it was there in the days of old before Jesus. Say hallelujah. There were people who were there before Jesus. Because Jesus was there from the beginning. Let me put it clear. Jesus was there from the beginning. From creation. But I want to talk about the Old Testament. When Jesus had not been born here on earth. Hmm? And there were people like Abraham who were asked to leave their father's house and go. Now, salvation is a journey. It has something to do with separating yourself. It has something to do with being set apart. And you have to know who does God want you to set yourself apart from? Do I want to say about our old salvation, we used to say some things I used to do. I don't do them anymore. Some songs I used to sing. I don't sing them anymore. There is a great change since I was born again. Hallelujah. And I want to say that God is still the same God even now. Say hallelujah. Moses passed the examination. There's a man who went through the times the conditions, terms and conditions of stay. Terms and conditions. Terms and. And you know somewhere it says. And if you put your hands on the plow. And you look back. You don't deserve. Huh? Hallelujah. There were people who looked back. And that was the end of their story. In the Old Testament. And so I want to talk to somebody say, say today, I'm just highlighting a bit. Abraham went through and he conquered. Moses went through the same tests. The Levites were set apart for God. They must be setting apart. Elisha had to leave everything and follow and follow and follow. And so did the disciples. Hallelujah. And so today I want to talk to somebody. Because it is important to know the standard of discipleship. Otherwise you may think you are a disciple. Yet the Lord finished with you a long time. And you were forgotten. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. You were born and you died. Talking about spiritual things. You were born and you died. Because how do you continue in sin when you are born again? That means you are still dead. Uh -huh. From the beginning you are not even there. You are still birth. If you know what a still birth is. Uh -huh. Am I talking to somebody? 
And why is it important to be discipled? Because if Jesus never discipled 12 men, today the salvation we are talking about would not have. Disciples must be there for the church to move on. And I don't know why we want to put a church to an end. The church cannot come to an end. Isaiah chapter number 9, are you there? Verse number 7. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Now underline that. That's all I wanted to say. Of the increase. Some other scriptures say, and the increase of his government. Of the increase of this government and peace. Shall never have an end. Am I talking to somebody? And I want to say, if you think the church is dying, the church is increasing. As days go by, God is increasing his church. Hallelujah. The increase of the government of God shall never come to an end. The issues of the spirit have to be programmed the right way. Take care of whose hands are you in. Who is handling you? There are people who are handled in church. They're in church. But they are handled more by the world than the church. Hmm? And so what comes out of you is not even what you get here. It's what you get in the world. I am very careful about Sunday believers. Sunday believers will come in only on Sunday for only two hours and you are done. My friend, we, you need help. You need help. And when I say that, I am very serious about it. Because if you are not used to being in the presence of God, you will be in the presence of something else. Hmm? And you need to be very careful about who is who. Who is who in your life? Hallelujah. Because children are born. But the one who handles them will take them to their destiny or destroy their destiny forever. Am I talking to somebody? We have seen cases where mothers have gone to give birth. And let me tell you, every child is destined for greatness. So tell your neighbor, imagine you are destined for greatness. Aha, tell somebody, imagine you are destined for greatness. Because once you are born in Christ, you have come to a better covenant. Hallelujah. You have come to a better covenant. Am I talking to somebody? You have come to greatness. You have come from, for to more grace. Hallelujah. The issue here is you are born. Who handled you? The Bible reckons that there was a baby who was born. A son of Jos Jonathan. Mephibosheth. Hallelujah. And this young man who was supposed to be the prince. Taking over the throne. Lost it all because of the hands of the handler. Mm. The hands, the hands, let me tell you, be careful about the hands of the handler because they can end your destiny there. And you will be forgotten. You will become crippled. Your destiny has come to an end. You know, Mephibosheth was handed over into the hands of a nurse. And what happened? You know, this is usual. Any mother who has given birth will take care of your kid more than a nurse. Huh? More than a nurse. If you are in the hands of a nurse, be careful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? And so now I want you to understand. All children are equal when they are being born. Whether they have been born 
born in a manger like Jesus Christ. Others have been born on the road as they go to hospital. Others have gone to very expensive hospitals. A baby is a baby. A baby is a baby. It doesn't matter whether your mother was black or white. You are born. Hallelujah. And when you are born, you are born for greatness. If you are not ready to fight for your destiny, you will be denied your right. Luke chapter number 14. You're there, say amen. Hmm? Luke. 14 verse 25. Now great multitude went with him and he turned and said to them, anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters. Yes, his own life also. He cannot be my disciple. I just want to read that. He cannot be. If he cannot hate his father, his mother, his children, his wife, his sister, his brother, even yourself. And then when we are talking about even yourself, we want to talk about denying self. You are not a priority as God is a priority into your life. What comes first is God before you. What comes first is God before you or anybody else. And I'm not saying you go and say to hate your sister and your brother and your wife. Somebody will tell me we are told we can even hate our wives. Hey, you come and see me behind the tent. I'll talk to you. I'm talking about spiritual issues. You have to put a demarcation. What comes first? Now listen. I'm not even talking about your service to God. It's not about your ministry. It's about you and your relationship with God. Am I talking to somebody? You need to grow and grow the right way. The Bible records in the book of chapter, uh, Luke chapter number 2 verse 40. The reason why I want to talk about being born and growing. Because if we have to grow the right way, spiritually, the issues of the spirit must affect your physical. Am I talking to somebody? We have to grow in every way. You won't tell me you are growing spiritually, yet your physical is speaking the opposite. Mm -hmm. Did somebody hear me? Your, phys your physical is speaking the opposite. If a pastor that you land into their hands and you are born again and that pastor cannot rebuke you then you are being mishandled. That's the scene of omission. And if you are mishandled possibilities of becoming a cripple are very high. Possibilities of losing your destiny are very high. So if a pastor is not bothered about your spirituality, your physical growth, your emotions. Uh -huh. And if you don't want to be rebuked, even emotionally, uh -huh, then you don't deserve. I know it is not easy. I know people don't like it when we speak the truth. But I want to tell you for free. You have to grow. Luke chapter number 2 verse 40. And the child grew. Verse 52 says, And Jesus grew. Let me read 40 first. And the child grew and became strong in the spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. If he grew in wisdom, he was not a fool. He accepted to obey. Do you know who we are talking about here? We are talking about John the Baptist. The guy who was told you should not take, you should not take. And he obeyed. 
so that he gets to his destiny. And the day John the Baptist came out of the wilderness, that marked the end of his work. Are you aware? John the Baptist came, started doing the ministry in the city. And he had been called for the wilderness. Eh? And that marked the end of his destiny. You will live. Tell somebody you will live. You will fulfill your purpose. As so long as you obey every single instruction. Stay in the wilderness. Uh -huh. Eat whatever you are supposed to eat. Not like any normal human being. Clothe yourself like and, uh, and somebody who is also not normal. But he obeyed and grew and fulfilled his purpose. Am I talking to somebody? If you have to be a disciple, whether in this generation or the generation you think that Jesus cannot touch, you have to deny self. Be ready to pay costs. Be ready to obey. Your physical must be affected by the spirit. Verse number 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and men. Your spirituality must be both physical and spiritual. It also has to affect your world. The, what, which, which world are we talking about? Your social world must be affected. Your financial, your corporate world must be affected. We are not talking about a God who is not able. So don't give me a story of a God who keeps you hungry. And the Bible says we should not worry what we eat, what we drink. That is the worry of the people of the world. Because our father knows. So if you want to tell me that your God allowed you to die in hunger. If he made manna in the wilderness, he can make manna for you right now. There is always manna. And manna is cut off when you come to your destiny. What we need is grow. Tell somebody we need to grow. What we need to do is grow. The moment you come out of your nurse, your mother, eh? your father. You know people want to say so much about this fatherhood story. Let me tell you, it is true you must have a father. A spiritual father. That is why Paul said, you could be having so many instructors, but one father. Somebody who is capable. Somebody who is answerable for your life. Hallelujah. And that one should rebuke you. That one should correct you. And if you feel you don't want to be corrected, then you need the hands of a nurse. And I will tell you for free. A nurse will make you crippled. Uh, I say a nurse will make you crippled. What you are looking for is not a father. You are looking for a nurse. Because you want comfortability. You don't want to be rebuked. You don't want to be corrected. You don't want to be told, come out of your sins. Let me tell you, your destiny can be cut off. I have seen nurses, when kids are being born, if they don't handle you right, when the baby is coming out, that baby may be deformed forever. Hmm? Or die in the hands of a nurse. I'm talking about physical, spiritual. Hallelujah. In the hands of a stranger, you will lose it. And a sheep must know the voice of the shepherd. And let me tell you, if you choose not to hear the voice of the shepherd, don't tell me I did not tell you. Eh? You don't like it when I rebuke? I rebuke. Because if I don't rebuke, I don't help some people. Cripples will be too many. And we don't want cripples. Let me tell you. Mephibosheth was even forgotten. As much as David had a covenant with Jonathan. 
But he could not even remember Jonathan had a son. Because when you are crippled, you are taken away from the sight of greatness. Am I talking to somebody? You are taken away from the sight of greatness. Mm. And it is possible to be forgive, forgotten. The reason why I say he was forgotten, because they were searching for. They were searching for. Is there no? Is there na, na, nobody? Is there? Tell your neighbor, don't, don't wait for that. Correct yourself. You may be forgotten. Mm? And they will pick you up. You are destined for greatness instead of walking like a king. Walking straight. Eh? With all the honors of your two feet, you are carried like this. And nothing can correct that. May the Lord help us. Lift up your hands before the Lord. I want to see somebody to say, God help me. I want somebody to say, Father, I want you to help me to maintain the standard of discipleship. Be ready to grow in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God, with the grace of God upon me. I want to follow your standards, oh God. I want to deny myself. I want to choose to go your way. May God help me. Lift up your hand, somebody. Are you talking? I want to hear somebody tell God, Lord, I need you to help me. Lord, I need you to help me because the only way I will get to my destiny is when I am in the right hands. Father, I pray that you may help me. I pray that you may help me. I pray that you may help me, oh God. Father, I bless your name and I give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray.